Ben Mankiewicz here in Los Angeles. Cenk is in uh, New York City. Been uh, hosting uh, MSNBC uh, during the 3 o'clock hour Eastern all month. Uh, Cenk, what's going on? Uh, everything's great in the world. Uh, this is a very, very schmoopy hour we have for everybody. Yeah, this is a particularly schmoopy hour. Um, uh, it was what year, Cenk? 2002? Yes, we were technically on for the first time uh, the day that Sirius Satellite Radio launched, which was February 14th, 2002. On uh, Sirius, uh, we, um, uh, Cenk and I, Cenk, you did one show alone, right? Uh, yes, uh, I did the first one alone, but that actually never made it to air. No, okay. That was just a test show that we gave them. So the very first show that made it to air was you and I, Ben. Do you remember the conversation that had us uh, engage in this uh, activity, which you have been uh, doing uh, for eight years, and I for the first five, and then off and on for the last three? Uh, you know, I'm not sure I do. I think you were mentioning it earlier, but I, it, tell me. I, I remember it very vividly. We were, I don't... I, I can't guarantee what restaurant we were at, but we were there. There were other people there. Um, and you mentioned that you'd done the show and that Sirius was going to let you do this show as often as you could. And we did, the shows weren't live then. We would do them, put them on a CD, and then we'd mail them, right? That's right. Yeah, we'd put them in. That's right. We would mail them in and they would then theoretically put them on air. Yeah, they theoretically put them on there. And you mentioned that you'd done this test show and that you were going to do it. And your conversation was sort of like there was a passive aggression to it. And you were like, yeah, I'm doing the show. And yeah, I mean, I think it'll be good. You have to talk a lot when you're alone. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I wasn't I was doing it. And I didn't know whether you even wanted me to ask. And I was like, well, maybe you'd like to do it with someone. And you were like, <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I was like, you know, I mean, I can do it with you. And you were like, oh, great, 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 great. And so we went in, we did that show at, uh, we did that one at, at ABC, right? At, in that studio. Was that the first one? Th that's right. At the ABC Disney Studios in Burbank. And th that's the one I think that Tom Joyner does his, his show out of, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it was a really nice, it was a great studio. It was a beautiful studio. Oh, yeah, gorgeous. I remember our producer, John Price. He's a great, great guy. Yeah, helped he us a helped, lot. Us, helped us for many years. Yeah. Um, so, and, you know, I let me just say real quick, I, I don't remember that conversation, uh, but uh, if if that's how it went, and I'm sure it is, then I was totally passive aggressive and totally full of crap because I definitely wanted you to do it. I remember Zara came up with the idea and I thought that was brilliant. Um, I was probably still, even though we'd known each other a long time at that point, I was probably still a little afraid to ask you because you were a big anchor man, you know, and I was like, does he want to, uh, you know, uh, slum it with me? Right. Yeah. I was a really big anchor man. Um, well, I mean, come on. You were like at when, in Miami, you were anchor and, 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 I, and I wrote the show or we wrote it together. Yeah. I didn't know if you wanted to do it with me. Right. Like, remember when you were awesome? <laughs> no, uh, no, I, no, I know what you're saying. No, no. I, I, anyway, it was uh, it, that was like the, the, the feeling each other out part that literally that lasted like 40 seconds. Okay. You know, there wasn't a lot of, and it was no brain. I totally wanted to do it. You wanted me to do it. We wanted to do it together, and we did. And so we would do shows every, uh, uh, like, we would do, we tried to do two a week, I believe, from your living room. Um, uh, do we have, we, well, we're going to play some late. Do we have, did we get an early show? We got, so we have an early show. We'll play some of that. Uh, and we did it for a while from your living room, literally from your living room of a relatively crappy apartment. Um, and I would go, I'd go over there, and we'd park, and we'd come up, we'd do the show. Um, and then we'd mail it to Sirius, and then Sirius would put it on the air. Uh, and we'd done, I don't know, this for like maybe half a year. There were about 50 shows that we'd sent in to Sirius. And then I went to Best Buy to uh, get, I don't know, uh, you know, a, VH, a VCR, <laughs> right? And or something, I'm at Best Buy, and, I, and they have a Sirius satellite radio um, display, right? And so I'm like, oh, what I would do is I'll turn it here to the channel that has the Young Turks on it so it's blaring throughout Best Buy. <laughs> We've been doing this five or six months. And I go, and they're playing the first show. So we essentially did about 50 shows. We mailed them to Sirius, and they never played them. They just kept for six months, essentially, playing the same show twice a week, every single week. You know, then we got, we, I found this thing online, because at that time I used to, like, Google our names, like the name of the show, my name, your name, et cetera, to see if anybody had ever heard the show, right? 
Uh, and there was one guy online who we still email with. It was Ben Garvey from Philadelphia, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I think he wrote a message saying, hey, these guys are great, but it looks like they did one show and then died. <laughs> like, if they're not dead, could they do a second show? <laughs> we, I love it. We'd been sent, mailing him shows like again and again and again. Uh, and then I guess we'd been doing it, what, about a year? Or so, when we made the uh, the most significant uh, change to, made to the Young Turks, more or less. You know, was it that long? I'm not even sure it was that long. Yes, yeah, I, I forget. And, and by the way, before we go on, I should say, why was I reluctant to ask you? We were doing it out of my living room for zero dollars and zero cents. Oh man, we didn't make we didn't make any money for like two years. Yeah, it's not like it was like, oh, Ben can't wait to do this. <laughs> right. No, but the fact is, I couldn't. So I guess what, like maybe nine months after we started, uh, we uh, we brought uh, uh, somebody on to like read some stories so that we could react to them, right? That was the idea. Oh, yeah. And and in the beginning, I believe she was reading the stories until we realized she was an awful reader. The worst. The worst. <laughs> <laughs> but she had like a billion uh, interesting things to say about the stories. She just wasn't great at reading them, um, uh, but anyway, obviously that was uh, uh, that was the uh, the beautiful and talented uh, Jill Pike, uh, and Jill uh, joins us from uh, Washington D.C. where she now is. Uh oh! Is. How about special that? surprise guest. How about that? <laughs> What's going on, Jilly? Um, it hello. It's so nice to hear your guys' voices. Uh, it's great to hear you too, Jill. By the way, look at us, man. We were all together in my living room in L.A. Now I'm in New York. Jill's in Washington. Ben's in L.A. It's uh, a lot of stuff has uh, a lot of stuff has happened. Um, uh, most Wait, of just to chime in, just on that. It's funny when I tell people about like people. I don't know why they're really interested, and they're like, "Wow, how did you get on the radio?" You know, all this stuff. It's very, very glamorous. And I was like, to be honest, I was like talking to someone randomly at a at a, a rap party for this awful pilot they were we were all working on, and they wanted somebody to read the news. And so I came on to read copy, and they both looked at each other about the third or fourth show in. They were like, this girl can't read. I mean, to save her life. <laughs> I wish we'd, I, I don't know, we pulled a, uh, some show. I, I, I don't know, I probably wasn't one where Jill was reading. Um, I don't know, I hope we pulled a Jill show. We need to make sure we have one of those. If we pulled one from too early, we need to go back and get one a few months in to make sure we get a Jill show. But, God, you were the worst. You couldn't get through a story. It was so great. No. And then you guys were like, okay, just... Why don't you break the story down and then just like right. tell us the story? <laughs> and I couldn't even do that. No, it was the, it was, you guys were like, I just stop, just stop. It was agony, right? But then when we actually would get a con oh look, there's the picture we used to have of you that's up right now. Um, oh my god! Oh my god! You are beautiful, Jesus. And somebody is uh, apparently uh, uh, gets to uh, uh, enjoy uh, that face for the rest of their lives. Is that true, Jill? They, they do. They do. Brendan, Brendan Boulder proposed to me on Sunday night. Hey! I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be Jill Bolger. Um, <laughs> you know, you have such a great name. I, I like it when women take the guy's name because it's like a commitment, and I like that. But, man, Jill Pike is a good name. Well, I tried to get him to take Brendan Pike. I've been trying to sell him on it and his friends, but he, he doesn't seem to, to want to do that. Yeah, Pike is a lot better name than Bolger. <laughs> But what are you going to do? I'll tell you what, Jill Pike and Brendan Bolger are the American couple. They totally are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those people are white. <laughs> and I realized that I've officially made it in Washington, D.C. because Mike Allen put our proposal in the playbook. Oh, really? Oh, hey! was like, I was like, I've made it. That's fantastic. That's exciting. Well, first of all, Jill, congratulations. It's very exciting. <laughs> um. So uh, do we have, let's, uh, um, before, because we got a lot of stories to tell, but do we, I, I can't emphasize enough how horrible Jill was at reading stories. I really, I, it was. But if you remember, if you remember back then, the only person who was tied with her was me. Oh, you guys were both like, literally it was, it was, you know, because I don't have many skills, but one of the skills is like reading a teleprompter. And that translates a little bit into the ability to grab copy that I haven't read and get through it quickly and break it down. And I can almost rewrite it as it comes out of my mouth. And sitting with you two guys was it was agony. It was it was I just every single story I'd be wanting like, just just give it to me. Just give it to me. 
<laughs> I'll do it. I'll read You're it. So and then talented, you guys, you guys You're talk so about it. You're so talented. Yeah, I know. That's it. It's a great skill. Comes in handy. Never. Um, <laughs> uh, well, it came in handy on this show. So uh, let's run a little, Jenk, let's run a little quick uh, clip of something we have. We don't know what it is. We've had it pulled randomly. You guys have it ready to go? Dave? Okay. You can nod or not nod. Okay, he's nodding. Uh, <laughs> some indicate. Jill, nothing's that's, changed. Um, <laughs> by the way, that's also classic TYT. Totally, yeah. Yeah, just, uh, what, anything? Nothing. Silence, nobody. They're all stone-like statues. Out there. All right, uh, Dave, so we have a little clip. Do we know what show? Here's a clip from an early show. Here's the music. Oh, it's coming? Oh, this is show five. Welcome Sorry. To the Here we go. Sirius Boosted Satellite up. Radio. We're your hosts, Jank Uger and Ben Mankiewicz. And our lovely producer, Zara Burton, with us. <laughs> hey ah, Zara's got that new mic. She's, <laughs> she's dangerous. She's feeling proud and sexy on it. Ready to test it out immediately. I didn't even know you were coming in there. But good work so far. <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, look, we got a wonderful show for you, as we always do here. First of all, uh, we're going to talk about a lot of uh, interesting stuff, including the new poll that came out showing how much the Arabs hate us U.S. Uh, people. Um, it's actually, I was actually surprised. I know we're going to talk about it later. I was actually surprised by that poll in the sense that I thought they hated us more. Really? You thought they hated us more? How much more can they hate us? Jesus but it's like Christ. two out of three hate us. By the way, all right, stop it for one second. But one in three don't hate us. Yeah. That's great news. <laughs> Dave? Well, that's I mean, I was going to say, I would have thought it was nine out of ten. Well, uh, here, Jank, uh, here's what we learned from that little clip. Uh, the show basically hasn't changed at all. Yeah, yeah, that's really funny because, look, the intro was a little rougher, but the reality is, Arabs, you sound exactly the same. In fact, to the point where I couldn't tell if you were jumping in and talking or if that was the old you. Um, yeah, no, I sound basically the same. You have, uh, I mean, you, you sound better. You didn't sound bad there, but you, you're, you know, you, you got a more broadcastery voice now. And I mean that in a good way. Right. You know what I thought as we were playing this, too? You know, all those, like, show 3 through 48 or whatever have never been heard by anybody. We should do, like, a special DVD package. For that show. Can we get a Jill show, by the way? We're sending the folks. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, we're going to get a show. Because I wish, I mean, it was a random shot whether we get Jill reading a story. But at least we need to hear uh, Jill exchange with us. Because that was, you know, when we brought Jill in. And you saw, you heard there, because Jenk's uh, girlfriend at the time, Zara, I'm sorry we didn't get to hear Zara, because Zara, Jenk, do a little Zara impersonation. Oh, please, what you want me to read now? <laughs> uh, J Zara was great, but we really needed another uh, voice. And, uh, and when Jill came, the, the show just got a ton better, don't you think? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Jill, didn't you feel like it was like an accidental career? No, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I, it's funny. I, I just, like, had to do, my old professor was like, can you please do a DVD about your your career path? And, um, <laughs> I mean, it's been accidental from day one, but, I mean, that was the biggest, best accident that ever happened to me. I mean, no training, no interest, no background whatsoever, and I just stumbled upon it. And, I mean, it was the greatest, what was it, like, four or five years? It was fantastic. Um, I mean, like, I'm forever grateful for that opportunity, and I mean, I, I still, I still, like, hear from fans and, like, from people that used to listen to the show, and people, like, people today, I mean, I've told Jank, like, will randomly come up to me who I didn't know four years ago, and they're like, I love the Young Turks, and I was going through YouTube, and da-da-da, and there were you, and, like, there was you. I was like, yep, that was me. Jill, give me an honest answer to this question. Yes. When Jenk was so positive about the direction the show was going to go and so forth, did you think what percentage, how much of a chance did you give to that actually happening? How much did you think he was full of crap? Uh, well, actually, I mean, I thought it was a long shot. Um, but but that it, it's a long shot without Jenk involved. I always believed in Jenk, and I thought that, Something was going to come of the Young Turks. I just wasn't sure in what capacity it was going to evolve. But, I mean, there was no way he was going to let the stream die. I mean, at all. Well. At all. I'm, uh, I'm going to take the other end. <laughs> um, uh, I thought this was, uh, for so long, I thought it was a, a pipe dream. 
and and then it would sort of progressively get to be less of one. <laughs> but I didn't, you know, I'd be like, well, you know, I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, the internet. People are going to go to the internet to get a mm-hmm. talk show. Mm, great idea. It's a good, good plan, Jake. Um, uh, and I did not share your belief in Jank, so that also <laughs> that also had something to do with it. it you know, I don't know, it, but we kept getting these like little victories along the way. That I mean, just we kept sort of riding the wave of hope, you know. And so I did believe in it. And I mean, and I I, I, I hate to. I hate to sound like your number one fan, Jank, but I mean, anytime anybody talks about that show and talks about you, you know, I, I mean, you really had a revolutionary idea. I mean, nobody was watching TV on the internet back then. I mean, YouTube was just starting to get popular. And I mean, and I still have that LA Times article sitting, you know, hanging on the wall in my office where it's like, if you can't get on TV yourself, you know, it's like, get on the net. You know, and you were like, well, F these people. They're not going to put me on TV. We'll, we'll put ourselves on TV. And it was the greatest idea that you ever had. And I remember, like, fumbling through all the production of it, and I was like, what the hell is he thinking? But you know what? I mean, it was a fantastic idea, and it is, I mean, it is paid out tremendously. All right. Now, l- let me give some love back. Uh, you know, we, I know we have Jill for a limited time today, so i got to tell you a couple of Jill stories. Um, f- first of all, when I think of some of the best moments on The Young Turks, uh, you know, I think of so many moments with Jill, and for what for whatever crazy reason, I you know the one story that always jumps out of my head was the enormously long debate we had on jean shorts. <laughs> oh, shorts, yes, of course, shorts. Yeah, <laughs> and shorts. how Jill wouldn't let it go, and it was yeah. it, they were unacceptable, and that debate was so much fun, and yeah. and and I love that, and I'll tell you something. You know, we built the show based on the idea that we should be honest with our audience. I know, you know, probably a lot of people say that, but I think we really try to pull it off, and we, we're incredibly earnest about it. And I would say that uh, Jill has a number one power ranking for most honest young Turk ever. <laughs> I mean, I mean you, you go listen to those old tapes, or you go watch some of those YouTube videos, uh, nobody will disagree. Can I tell you, I, I, I remember vividly a conversation I had with my parents. We were sitting at the Pacific Dining Car in Los Angeles, and he looked at me across the table, and it was really when sort of the Absolute Truth show started taking off, and he's like, are you really comfortable with the things that you're talking about on air? He's like, I can't even listen to you anymore. There's going to come a day, Jill, there's going to come a day where you're going to look back and you're going to think, what the hell was I talking about? And uh, let me tell you. I don't regret anything that I have said, but there have been some times where people have come up to me and um, said they, they may have Googled me and or looked at me on uh, YouTube, and I just cringe thinking <laughs> of stories. And, deep, and it's like, hang on, Jill, stop talking for a second. And he really sec. pushes in, and then he looks at you like, uh-huh, you feel me, don't you? <laughs> and you're like, you want it. oh, my God, please stop. And I have to. I close my eyes and turn away. Half the time I have sex, I have my face like somewhere else just so I don't catch an eye of like what they're actually looking like when they're That's having horrible. sex. That's horrible. Because I just that can't, I can't, I can't handle it. I just, you know what it is? I can't handle be- people being human in front of me. Yeah. I mean, that's if he's trying, but if he just has a look on his face. Oh, that was a good Jill moment. That was nice. I'm, oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Maybe. the worst one and the one I'm always hoping nobody catches is um, me singing sticks into my vibrator. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's a good one. You just type in masturbation in Jill, and there you go. Hey, can you look at uh, uh, Brandon when you guys have sex, or do you have to avert oh. your eyes? I can, actually. Okay, good. I can. Well, then he sounds like he's the man for you. I can. <laughs> You know, as we played that clip, that was classic Jill, right? And it, it's great stuff, man. And, you know, Jill chose the name for the original kind of like entertainment and pop culture show we did on YouTube. She chose the name Absolute Truth. And boy, did she deliver on that. Yeah, there was a... And, and, the, and then you also got in that show, in that moment of incredible honesty, is that you got the legitimate honesty of tension between Jenk and Jill that would develop on the air not infrequently. <laughs> no, but seriously, listening to that again, Jill, it makes me think like you should go back into media. <laughs> Cuz there's 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 something there. I, I mean, the problem is I feel like the only platform for like me and my honesty though was the Young Turks. I mean, where else are you going to be able to let me just sort of go 
wild about the things that I think about and do on the air. And then also, as Ben pointed out, um, had the silent treatment with my Oh, host. my God, yeah. It was great because Jill, <laughs> Jill it was a, it's a rare radio uh, personality who decides not to speak to demonstrate her <laughs> anger at another one of the hosts. <laughs> and so Jill would make a point, and Jack would say something, and they'd have a fight, or I'd even get involved sometimes, too. And then Jack would be like, all right, so Jill, what's next? And he'd be like, Jill would be like, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, whatever you say. Whatever you want. No, you do whatever you want, Jen, because that's all you do. That's fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loved it. All right, now, now that we're full-scale schmoopy, let me tell two more Jill stories real quick. I tell you what, can we take a break or we have to wait uh, until... Uh, uh... Well, Jill's got to run, actually. So let me, let me tell these okay. two quick uh, stories, and then we'll, we'll come back and tell you uh, what we're doing uh, going forward and stuff. So, look, uh, one was the 99-hour filibuster. Jill was a demigod through that. First of all, she 100% encouraged it. In fact, I asked her, I said, do you think we can do it? And she, do you think we should do it? And she was like, hell, yes, we should. And then she sat there for, I don't know if it was how many, 70 hours of the 99 or whatever it was. And she was, we literally, obviously, could not have done it without her. And that was a huge moment for us and a huge stepping stone. And so I, I can't thank her enough for that. And then she was actually at the original meeting at, a, at the diner in L.A. when uh, me, Jill, and, and Jim Gilliam hatched the idea for the internet tv show to begin with and and jim mm -hmm. told us oh yeah you can get cameras and i can show you how to do it and jill was like yeah yeah let's do it so i mean to say that jill was critical in the young turks is a vast understatement well it was um it was a privilege and a joy to be a part of it and you know i'm not gonna lie um there are days where i think like why why did i leave um but um but you know such is life and um i don't I don't have regrets, you know, because my life has turned out wonderful and fantastic here, and I fell in love and, you know, married a wonderful man. But, I mean, the days of the Young Turks and, you know, being a part of your life, Jank, and Ben's life, and everyone there, JR and Dave and Jesus and everyone, I mean, like, it's, it's, there are moments that, you know, I wish I could have every day, but I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't take them back for anything. You know, Jill, there's like 100 people working here now. I know. It's ridiculous. I mean, there's like a bunch of guys' names I don't even know. Tom, Tom or something answers the out phone. There. I'm like, Tom, who are yeah. you? Andy, I think, is one of them. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, but I mean, it's amazing to think that it was just, it was so few people and we weren't getting paid. And, Jenk, how many full time staffers are there now? There are about 10. It's unbelievable. unbelievable. Would I have finally gotten a raise by now? No, not you. <laughs> <laughs> We talk about, it. but actually, if you listen, if you ask these, I people, mean, I was just so hungry, I had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> One can't blame you. And by the way, right now, all those guys that uh, Ben was talking about, Tom, Dick, and Harry, are thinking, uh, "No, you wouldn't have gotten that race." <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, well, Jilly, uh, congratulations! That's excellent news, and uh, uh, we hadn't spoken in a long time until Jenk had his baby, and we exchanged emails, but. Uh, Next time I'm home in uh, D.C., I would love to uh, uh, see you and meet your uh, meet the future Mr. Pike. Yeah, <laughs> I would love for you to meet him. All right. Uh, Jill, you, Jill. Jill Pike, everybody. All right. Thanks, guys. I love you. Love you, too. We love you, too. Bye. Jill.